log continuation. It's um, 26 after 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Still the 17th of March, 2022. <laughs> I think I got an idea why Putin's doing this. The professor in our class, AV College, world lit, Tara Fella was uh, trying to bring out some stuff concerning about the uh, originally the kind of depressed thinking that the uh, Russians had, trying to accept their faith sometimes and other times may or may not be able to, to control it, but they tried, even with the fall of the czars, they wanted everything common, that's where the communists won over the czars. It's not exactly what they're looking for. What they're looking for is power. I think I'm going to get more and more of what Orwell was trying to tell us back in the 20s and 30s when he was... Hang on, I got a sec to... Hang on. No, I got to do this right now. I got to do this right now. Even as we're talking on this one here. Communist Party came out back in the 20s and 30s. <sighs> Stalin was trying to get it going. I mean, first he had Lenin and Marx. Marxism. Power of, of the common people. But there still had to be a select community. There still had to be a select entity. With the idea of holding on to power no matter what the hell it is. Somehow Orwell was picking up on these kind of things going on even in Europe. You had Kaisers, you had Prime Ministers, you had different rulers maneuvering, outmaneuvering with with treaties, with no treaties, maybe with common agreements, trying to outmaneuver people. Some actually had altruistic viewpoints while the others didn't. What's good and what's beneficial for their own, but screwing everybody else at the same damn time. Why not? What's power but power for its sake? If they wanted power, it's not for altruistic, it's for power, period. Don't control power. Power is control. And all and Orwell and uh, Orwell was trying to make that abundantly clear. There was a video that the professor was wanting us to watch the entire weekend concerning about what's going on now back then and and back then when the authors were bringing out their works because each time each generation saw they saw what was going on and it was so abundantly clear during those times and those viewpoints I am a naive fool why don't you see these damn things coming? Power for power's sake. That's why Putin's doing what he's doing right now. He's demonstrating his power versus everyone. Whatever happened with this guy over the past several de a few decades, he's allowed power to corrupt his head what was that expression again? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. 
He originally grew up in a corruptible society where power was achieved within the Communist Party, within the, so within the Soviet Union. All you had to do was find a way to, get, uh, to, obtain, to obtain it and achieve it and still be part of the system. It didn't matter if you were ruthless or not. Power for power's sake. That's what the Soviet Union was. That's why they kept fighting throughout, uh, throughout the decades ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union because so many countries had a taste of freedom, of liberty, away from their control. When someone kept kept saying that two plus two is four, and you have somebody saying no, that's incorrect. How many times in literature and how many times in genres have we used this example left and right? Star Trek: Next Generation, when you actually had a two-parter episode, Patrick Stewart played. Uh, Captain John Luke Picard leading a strike team on a uh, Cardassian place because of some kind of biogenetic, biomimetic uh, material that needed to be neutralized. And Picard gets captured and tortured. The torture is to break him, but the torture is to break him more and more into a different truth, into a different reality. And the same damn thing that Aldous Huxley missed on his shows, but our world didn't miss in his book of 1984. Or as some other people have described it, 1948. Right after World War II, Europe was being split apart. Russia was gobbling up territory. And the Allied forces had to reluctantly agree to a point of what was going to be divided. Spoils to the victors and that sort of thing. But in order to rebuild... Europe, there had to be other resources to be dug up in order to do so. Everywhere was thrashed and traumatized. At this point in our current time, this is what we're trying to avoid right now, is to have a Europe not go through that again. And yet we have already have that ongoing in different countries throughout the decades. Generations are growing up in a war zone right now, and that's the only thing they ever know about. No peace. No tranquility. Only a power of a madman who still retains control and torn apart by different rebel factions left and right. Some of which was being supplied by both Russia and the United States. Going after each other. In this situation we got regarding Putin going after Ukraine, he's probably feeling more of the insanity of the control of what power is. Power is ego. Control is ego. Everything has to do with ego. And this is what it's all about. Regarding Orwell, it's, it's all about ego. In Aldous Huxley's books, Brave New World, in one particular video that we're trying to watch, they're, they're doing a session, Huxley versus Orwell's masterpiece. And they want the audience to decide. Audience dressed up well to do in in England four years back when we didn't have the Ukraine shit going on. 
But we still had other things happening with politics. And the elections were coming up. Midterms were already there. And everything was still up in the air. News was still being called fake. Everything was fake. You're talking about totalitarianism. People are screaming and yelling about that one online as well on social media. In different channels, in different forms and, con and formats. That uh, it was people going head to head sometimes. The major news corporations, most of them cooperating with each other and understanding what real news was, was about, while, new, while one kept spouting off fake news and still doing so, even to this day and to this hour, that their loyal followers and their loyal minions who get on the camera and start spouting it off. In this time, in this day and age, we don't take people off the air for spouting that shit off unless it's becoming too damn dangerous. And certain corporations will limit. And maybe sometimes the FCC will get involved. But we are dealing with the same situation we're reading decades ago happening right now as it is. And it's scary that these guys have tried to proselytize and prophesy what we may be going through. And it's both of them right now. Huxley term, you have medications trying to solve everything. You also have different classifications of different people out there. And it's it, policies are saying it's illegal. There are laws saying it's illegal, but it still happens anyway. We still have your alphas. We still have your betas. We still have your gammas and deltas and then the epsilons. The epsilons would be the homeless. The deltas and the homeless. Uh, epsilons would be the homeless. The gammas, well, they're struggling. Low income. The betas are the middle management and the A's are the alphas are getting the top dollars of everything. CEOs of stuff. While watching this show that the professor wanted me to watch, and I've got it on mid-pause right now, I just had to listen to some of them, what they were, what they were pulling up the extracts from 1984, and hearing it and comparing it today. See, I understand better of this right now than I do understanding about Tolstoy and Dostoevsky, because those guys are putting me to sleep sometimes. Dostoevsky was all right, but he still was putting me to sleep, and so was so is Tolstoy. They're both depressing as hell. They both need soma. And the thing is, I had read and had seen nineteen, no, not nineteen eighty-four, but uh, Brave New World. I had seen it as a kid, and I had read the book as a teenager in class. I never kept the book, but I read the book. It was a class. It was a school book. But it's still downloadable, and I got it somewhere. And seeing how the savage in the book was trying to deal with the reality of around him, he was amazed of the brave new world. And the thing of it is, it was looking like Disneyland. Exteriors you can fall in love with, but the interiors suck. They can go out alone with the carnal pleasures, but with no responsibility, no teachings, no guidance, no morals, no judgments, no laws. But you're genetically made for these kind of classes.
And even if the savage had disappeared, nothing changes in the book. Except the savage. And he dies. Because he can't deal with the brave new world that's right in front of him. How would he have been able to deal with 1984, though? But we have our character there dealing with it. He held on to something and lost it. But if he actually held it back to prove something that the state could not take away. Reality check. But here's the thing. During the uh, 2016 election, when Trump took over office, in America's terms, he was trying to do exactly that. And even in the 2020 election, he was still doing that. We're coming up on midterms next year. Or actually, at the end of this year, we're coming up on midterms. And they're still dealing out with the fact that Trump won. But he did win. And those people who could prove it are getting nailed left and right, are getting, are getting railroaded, are getting offices removed because of what they perceived. So in this case, we're dealing with Orwell in 1984 right now. Who's the big brother in this one? Would that be Trump? Would that be the followers? You hear what's happening in the U in the U.S. Congress, both in the Senate and also in the House, more in the House. When they're mouthing off left and right. It seems like we're coming to that thing in because they tasted power. They wanted more of it. They're growling. They're howling. And they're gathering forces in packs right now. So yes, <laughs> I'm understanding it more and more. A thought police. How about that? How about that? Also, in the news speaky that we have, people who would change formats and and dynamics of our words, of our word structures, left and right, to where certain words would mean only certain things. This is the same damn bullshit that Trump had been doing when he was in office. And a lot of people kept trying to follow through. But the press corps kept after them. And they still are. See, we have the classes of people happening right now. But we also have Orwellian things happening right now as well. And no wonder they kept considering Orwell as leftist. Because they don't know what the hell they're doing. They want things extreme. They want things their way. It's the control. It's the power. Power in her taste buds. Try this one. You take a chip. A flavor of Doritos that you haven't tasted before. Your chemical response is blown to hell. You're wanting more of this. And if you don't get it, it's going to kill you. You talk about a hell of an addiction at this point over here. It's no wonder 12-step people can understand this crap more and more often because we know what the damn seductive and alluring things are these days. They think they have power and control over us, and they don't half the time because we try to find ways of getting past that control. Admit to ourselves that we got screwed up things in our lifetime we want to make amends to. We're powerless over... Whatever's screwing us over left and right. We turn our lives over to the care of a power greater than ourselves to restore us to a sanity level that we understood. And then we start working on it. And in that instance, concerning about the 12-step program, I can deal with the ego situation. I can understand more about the control situation. And then as more as I read science fiction books or the gothic horror stories, the more they're following the same damn shit we're following these days. And it's something the professor hadn't caught up on, but this is the reason why an English major has to do his research. Now, in the class today, I know some students were 
chip when it comes down for the Russian. I wasn't. I listened. I tried to pay attention to it. I snored right through the damn shit. You guys are talking about depressing more worse than, than taking Somnix. Putting me to sleep. Try to understand Russian mentality of everything's fatalistic. Everything seems to be fatalistic. Everything by a fate, certain by, by a fate, but maybe there's a little bit of hope down the road, if there's tradition, if there's something of a follow-through, if there's a pattern to follow through, if these people are supposed to be following this certain pathway, this certain guideline, if they're supposed to do this and conform and comply, just like when you had the czars going. You had your peasants, and then you had your ruling class. What's that to understand about the shit in the first place? Except you throw out a hell of a lot of English terminology out there. Put it in simple terms. Put it in simple terms that you understand about you learned that something that you learned. Maybe I'm spouting off like a damn spigot, just pouring a hell of a lot of crap that doesn't make sense. But maybe somehow. Somewhere it's going to make sense. Maybe not to you, maybe to someone else. But the stuff I've been trying to go through, trying to get clarification. They want critical thinking in response on this one. Critical thinking in literature. You're supposed to tear these things apart left and right in order to find out where, where the zeros and ones are working. You're supposed to find out where the leaks are in the plumbing that there are any creative leaks or any creative plumbing that still needs to be worked on. Who knows, we may be fighting Goombas at the same time. Yeah, I use different references in order to make things sense. Because if I don't, well, some things don't make sense. And they should. I'm going to be watching the rest of the video a little bit later. Because right now, the body is telling me that it needs to go for a couple hours of sleep right now. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to oblige it. This is not about power or ego. This is biology 101. But this particular video, I am going to be posting out there. And I am going to have someone take a look at the information. I'm going to have our professor take a look at the information this week. And yes, according to the, from this one particular student to the professor, I'm still trying to consider and reconsider it. I was off my game and off my mind when I was doing the voices regarding what we were talking about regarding Dostoevsky's little nightmare items. I'll think I want to deal with that again. Oh. I might have blown the poor blogger away. Insufferable little twit. Well, he's never run into people like this before. He's never run into literature before. He has never run into people uh, similar to this. I would imagine some other people he would have come across. Ugh. If there was a Major Charles Emerson Winchester the third, he might have gotten a little bit cocky with him. Of course, he'd called him poor boy. It's absurd. Hey, well, these things shall happen. All for poppycock. Off to the bed I go. Oh, good Lord, I gotta keep the rest of this material up.